In this video, we're going to be looking at the technique of completing the square as a helpful algebraic technique in um, evaluating an integral. So here I have the integral of 1 over the square root of 27 minus 6x minus x squared um, dx. And I mentioned I wanted to try to use completing the square. Um, one reason that completing the square is going to be useful is that we do know some um, integration forms where I have um, 1 over the square root of something squared minus something else squared. So let's just remind ourselves what that um, integration form is. Well, I know, for example, here on 16, um, that the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx is equal to arc sine. I also have something about the integral of 1 over x times the square root of x squared minus 1 being arc secant. But in my, my given problem, I do just have um, a single square root in the denominator. I don't have something outside of that square root. So it seems like maybe um, what I have here could be related to some sort of arc sine. So let's recall that the integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared dx is arc sine of x plus c. Um, just remember that when we write arc sine of x, this is the same thing as when I write sine with the negative 1 there. That means the inverse inverse sine. Arc sine and sine inverse then are the same functions. Um, they're the ones that undo the, the sine function. It's the inverse of the sine function. So maybe what I have here could somehow be at some sort of arc sine. So let's see how we can use completing the square um, to figure this out. So if I write down 27 minus 6x minus x squared, in order to complete the square on this, I'm going to first factor out that negative. So I'm going to have positive x squared plus 6x and then minus 27. So in our algorithm for um, completing the square here, um, I'm going to take x and then half of my middle term. So I'm going to have x plus 3 and then square that. And then I'm going to need some sort of correction piece. So notice that if I expand this part out, x plus 3 squared would give me back x squared plus 6x plus a constant term of 9. But I want um, to have what I, I create here in this parentheses be equal to x squared plus 6x minus 27. So I have to think of what's the, the correction term that I need here um, so that what I put in there plus 9 will be equal to 27. So I have this little algebra problem. Uh, 9 plus some b here is equal to negative 27. Well, that means that I must be needing to subtract 36. So I'm going to have minus 36 that goes in there. And that form will be equal to what I started with. So now I can um, rewrite this a little bit in a form that will make it more clear how this is related to arc sine. I'm going to distribute that negative sign back through. I'm going to focus on this particular line. So I'll have this negative times my x plus 3 squared and the negative times the negative 36. So I get 36 um, minus x plus 3 squared. Okay, so that completing the square, let me label this here. So we're going to use completing the square. So this is reviewing this particular algebraic technique that's often um, useful for when we recognize something might be kind of like an arc sine or kind of like an arc tan or an arc secant type um, integral. We did, um, when I have x squared, I'm going to take x and then add half of the middle term. We figure out what we get when we square that, and then we figure out what correction term we need to add to get back the constant that we had in our original expression. Okay, so. Now I have that my integral of dx over the square root of 27 minus 6x minus x squared is equal to this integral of dx over the square root of 36 minus x plus 3 squared. Okay, so that doesn't um, look exactly like that integral of 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared, but this is similar to the problem that we did um, earlier where I had um, something that looked kind of like the integral of 1 over x squared plus 1. And we remembered that that was arctangent x plus c. And then I had a rule for the integral of 1 over x squared plus a squared. I had this, a more general rule that I was able to use. Or I could do multiple steps and use some u substitution to take what I had um, and convert it to a form where I had 1 over something squared plus 1. So we could do a similar thing here. I could do some algebra 
to take that 36, factor it out, and make this 1 minus x plus 3 squared all over 36, um, and then get it into a form where I could use some substitution and see how this was, um, with a substitution, really like this square root, 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared form. But to save us a little time, since we've already seen how that substitution procedure can go, um, we're going to note that we have the following rule, that the integral of 1 over the square root of a squared minus x squared dx is equal to arc sine of x over a plus c, as long as we have a positive a that we're um, considering here. So just to note where you can find those more general rules, these are um, the page of rules that are found um, on our website with the handout that's also included um, in Canvas. But this is the table of um, the basic integration formulas in their more general forms that you can find in your textbook. So you can see we're making use of the following rule here. So we um, won't go through those, those different u substitution steps in this example. Okay, so I see that I have this, this type of um, rule that I can apply. I still need to think about doing a little bit of a u substitution. So instead of having x squared, I actually have this x plus 3 squared. So let's go ahead and let u be equal to x plus 3, and then my du is my dx. So I have an integral then of du over the square root of 36 minus u squared. So notice that if I have 36 here, when matching this to the form of a squared minus uh, my variable um, x squared here, my a is equal to um, 6. Okay, so what does that mean here? That means that I've got arc sine of u over 6 plus c as my um, antiderivative here. And then I can just put this back in terms of x, where my u was equal to x plus 3. So I have arc sine of x plus 3 over 6 plus c. So we can see using completing the square together with knowing this general rule for um, our, the integral of something that will lead to an arc sine um, really simplifies that problem a lot. Again, you could have done, if you didn't remember that rule, you could do um, the technique similar to what we did earlier with some, some factoring and some additional use substitution to make it look like the square root of 1 minus something squared, but using this general rule speeds up the problem a little bit.